Hey everybody, welcome back to The Garage, and today is the much long-awaited and anticipated video on torque idle tuning. And this is a very kind of muddy water subject, and I've done a lot of testing to try and get some clear uh, understanding of what's going on. So this is going to be a Gen 5 specific thing because that is the platform that uses the torque settings to do any of the power delivery. And there's a lot of, uh, well, there's not a lot of tables to mess with here, but there's not a lot of information on what the tables do, how they work, what they are directly affecting. And through some trial and error, I think I've figured most of it out. Now in the past, I have gone in and been able to fix torque issues through the actual virtual torque tables. You can plot out where you're at on those tables, make adjustments to the torque there, and fix any kind of idle issues. But you're supposedly, you should be able to use the actual idle torque tables. And that's what we're going to look at today. So stick around. <music> First off, I want to say thanks to all the new subscribers out there. If you've not clicked the button down in the corner already, go ahead and do that now. You don't want to miss out on any future videos. And ring the bell so you don't miss out on the live show Thursday night at 8 Eastern. That way you get that notification saying, hey, it's getting ready to start. I want to jump on there and chat with the garage and all the other people who are in the chat. We broke over 70 uh, viewers last time live, which is awesome. Who knows, maybe one of these days we'll break 100. It gets crazy on there. A lot of people asking questions, getting answers. So it's a real quick and easy way of uh, having a community discussion around tuning and performance. So that all being said, though, I want to go ahead and throw the disclaimer out there. We are messing with some stuff. You probably can't really mess anything up other than not making it where your vehicle is not going to run. Uh, but I don't think that you can really do any damage by adjusting these parameters. But nonetheless, let's hit up the uh, disclaimer real quick. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I'm gonna pop up the tab here. I've got it loaded up. I'll put it in the corner here. Maybe I'll move over a little bit so we got some more room to work at. This is the tab that you're gonna see whenever you go into the idle tab and then go into the torque settings. Now, for the RPM stuff, there's a lot of stuff that you can mess with underneath there that you don't really need to mess with. The base one being the ideal one where you go in and set your target RPM. All of the stuff that adjust, uh, I would leave that stock if necessary or if possibly because you can really start messing some stuff up and that's only making some very minute adjustments the big stuff is to be had is over on the torque table or on the torque tab and there's only four parameters here and uh, you've got on the left hand side there you've got the idle speed control or idle speed reserve and one of them is the actual table that goes in there and is kind of an error table and it says okay based on what our rpm and i believe our air mass is let me double check so we've got our speed control reserve table and based on rpm and air mass it kind of gives you an air number and that number uh is in foot pounds of torque but it seems to be like maybe this one is on the uh, engine side of the torque whereas some of the other stuff that we deal with in this particular application is going to be on the axle side that's what threw me off for the longest time and because there's not a lot of uh, uh, descriptors on this that says hey this is using axle torque versus engine torque but it seems like this table actually uses engine torque uh, and then underneath it you have the speed control multiplier that one actually applies on top of this as a multiplier let me open that one up real quick and let's take a look at it and here you can see that this table is rpm error based and so the further off that we are from our actual set point base rpm settings it applies multiplier you can also see that it is speed based so this is something that will affect you whenever you are uh, coming into idle off of driving so whenever you transition from whatever is controlling torque back to idle controlling torque this will have some effect on it basically it's going to be like zero pedal torque but at speeds but up above however many you know a couple miles an hour you're still not going to hit the idle table until you finally get down to a lower point and then it starts applying multipliers to that previous table that we looked at that gives it some error range now a lot of people have had luck using this to smoothen out their idle so if their idle is hunting and it's not hunting in an extreme case, you can go in there to the original speed control table and 
uh, make those numbers a little bit smaller so there's not as much error that they can correct, but they will still usually correct it to the point, but if those numbers get too big, it causes it to hunt because you'll overshoot. So don't get too carried away on these tables. In fact, I found leaving them stock will actually work. And if anything, the actual speed control uh, air table, uh, I will cut that one uh, in half or multiply it by 0.75 to narrow those down a little bit just to smoothen out the idle a little bit. Okay, here's the important table. This is the external load table and the option above it is the load offset. That load offset is literally what it says. If you were to go in here on this table and find a number uh, based on and it's on oil temp, which is weird because a lot of the trucks don't have an oil temp sensor, but most of the cars probably do, like the Camaro and the Corvette. And then it is based off of RPM. But if you were going there and find a number, it then has the ability to go above that number based on what's in the uh, load offset table. And I tested this out by actually going in and putting a negative number in there. Man, it hated it because I already went in from the get go took this table, knocked it down by a quarter to see what would happen. The thing would barely run. With a set point of 850, it was uh, actually getting maybe about 475 RPMs. I went in on top of it and made the uh, load offset negative 50 foot-pounds, and it wouldn't run at that point. And that's because that is a buffer on top of it. So this table is what determines kind of your idle set point or as far as torque goes. And so if this table, the... Uh, external load table is not dialed in fairly close, it's not going to actually idle. Keep that in mind. Now, that being said, in my particular setup, because I have a supercharger on there, that is going to go up on my truck. Now, if you were to have a big naturally aspirated cam, there's a good chance that this table actually needs to go down. Uh, you're probably perfectly safe leaving the uh, load offset as it is, uh, but if anything, you can bump that up a little bit if you're having a hard time finding what the idle set point is. Right now, I have got the stock torque tables, the virtual torque tables in there, and the stock uh, idle torque tables in there. So let's go fire the truck up and see exactly how it idles. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and connect up with the scanner before starting the vehicle up so we can see it right off the get-go. Uh, there are the corrections in here. So even if it doesn't idle well right off the bat, eventually it should start to learn itself out. But let's see how well we can do here. So we're idling a little low. So as you can see, we we're at least 100 low, and it was pulling a lot of timing. That's because our torque tables in this situation are a little bit low because of the added air. Now, if this were a cam, it might be the opposite. We might have an issue where it's idling off because we are predicting that we should have more air than we're actually getting, and it has to make up the difference utilizing the torque calculations. We're going to come in here, and we're actually going to bump my external load table up and see if this helps solve the issue. And we're going to bump it up by about 15% to start. Now because we already had a limit offset of 69 foot-pounds of torque in here, we had some room to go up. I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to 100 also. That way if we didn't quite get the number where it needs to be on the external load table, maybe this will give us the room to let the computer learn up to where it needs to be. We'll go ahead and save this as step two. The original one being step one uh, was our as found. I'm going to flash this in and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've bumped our external load table up and we've extended our load offset out to 100 foot-pounds of torque. Hopefully this time whenever we fire it up now, it will go pretty much directly to our set point of 848 in this situation and just idle nice and smooth. We're still a little bit low there, and you can tell on top of it, it had to pull quite a bit of timing because we still have a lot of airflow coming in on that. So we're going to go ahead and bump it up again. 
Bombs. This time, let's go a little bit crazy with it. We've already bumped it up 15%. Let's go ahead and bump it up another 30% and see what happens. Just remember, if you're dealing with a cam, you're probably having to go the opposite direction. In this case, you might be subtracting 10% by multiplying by 0.9. Okay, now we've bumped out our external load table to a total of about 45%. Let's go ahead and fire the truck up, see how it does now. Pretty good. I mean, I would consider that just about as good as we're going to get in this situation. It fires up, settles in, everything starts taking over, doing its calculations, and it's hitting within probably 15 to 20 RPMs of our set point. That's ideal, especially given that we are running a very aggressive throttle body and a very aggressive supercharger pulley on this. So there's a lot of air dynamics that have been changed on the way that this thing breathes. And because of that, we have to make concessions on the torque side of it and the spark side of it in order to get a good idle. Now, if you watch my previous uh, Gen 5 cam idle tuning video that I put out there, we did a lot of the adjustments through the virtual torque tables, and that's still a viable way of doing it. I have found out even on my own vehicle that going in there making the adjustments to that table seemed to work. This external load table seems to work in, a, in addition to that, and so there is adjustments that can be made on this that does not require the virtual torque tables to be adjusted. Now, which one is easier? Uh, I'm not sure. And which one is the right way? Well, everybody's going to say that probably doing it through the external load table like we just did is going to be the right way. Uh, I've had better luck through the virtual torque tables, specifically on uh, other people's vehicles that have very aggressive cam stuff going on in there that the external load table doesn't seem to pick up with it or you get a lot of swinging load. And so we will make adjustments accordingly to the external load table, then go back out and have to make some additional adjustments to the virtual torque in the area of the idle. Uh, so it may be one of those situations that the further away that you get from a stock vehicle, you have to make adjustments to both. But hopefully this gives you a little better insight as to how these four parameters underneath the idle torque tab work. Now, Grant, it's not the clearest thing in the world. I wish that there was some set and concrete information out there, but there does not seem to be in four or five days uh, this week alone, going through tweaking all of these settings, seeing how I can break the idle, which settings need to be adjusted, and what it all boils down to is the external load is really the only one that I've found that needs to be adjusted in probably 90% of the cases out there. So keep that in mind, and remember, don't go out and start making a bunch of adjustments to everything. I see it all the time, in particular on the RPM table, where people go in on the, uh, the uh, derivatives and stuff like that and start jacking these numbers up, their vehicle doesn't run worth a damn, doesn't idle, and that's because they've changed too much. There's not a lot. Even though we have access to all of these tables does not mean that we need to uh, make adjustments to all these tables. So keep that in mind whenever you get into tuning, specifically around things that affect the idle, like superchargers or cams. Uh, but if you have any questions, suggestions, critiques, any of that stuff as usual, hit up the comments down below. I would love to get feedback from other Gen 5 guys who have been doing this, what their thought process is on it, because there's not a lot of concrete information out there. And the information that's out there, I'm not 100% sure if it is all true. And so what we're trying to do is myth bust some of the stuff out there, get a better understanding of what these values actually do if you change them. And the coolest way of doing that is to actually change them and see what happens. Hopefully before the winter time is over, we'll get the cam installed in here, throw another wrench into it and see, oh man, how are we going to deal with the issue now? Because effectively, we still have a lot of air on the bottom end because of the supercharger setup, but now we have a cam that maybe is less efficient at letting that air in on the bottom end. I'm not sure how that's going to work because it's a little counterintuitive to a naturally aspirated setup. We'll just have to see. Now, as I said, on a naturally aspirated big cam setup, you lose efficiency on the bottom end around idle. That's what that lope is. Your engine is not breathing. You don't pull as much vacuum. And thus, you are actually going to have less torque on idle 
keep that in mind whenever you come in to do tuning on something like this. As always, I want to thank all the subscribers, all the patrons out there. Check the links down in the description for merch, decals, the Patreon for tune assistance, all that stuff. I want to thank you for taking the time to stop by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.